because if they're going to terminate your rights in three days, you, there's a lot you can do, but you got to do it like last week. Um, yeah, I, I've been trying to get a hold of CPS and they said no, because no, no, I'm no, not no, there no, in no, person. No. Okay, we're back. I'm attorney Vince Davis. This is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and Win. I'm on with my co-host, Amanda Sisko and Brian Hamilton. And before the break, we were talking uh, to Diana from Arizona. Diana, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. Um, did you have some questions that you wanted to ask one of us? Yeah, um, I did want to ask because I've been calling lawyers and I have not had any luck. Um, like I said, I do have court in three days. They're terminating all my rights. Um, I didn't get the chance because I, I was held hostage. You know, I didn't get that chance to fight for my kids like I should have. But now that I got out and got away from him and my daughter's out of the house, I'm able to get all my diplomas and everything, everything. I It might be too late, but you never know. Um, I want to know, like, how can CPS place my daughter in such a bad home and then they want to charge me for letting my daughter see their dad? You know, I just, I'm, it's not that I'm trying to get back at them or trying to show them anything. I just, I, I guess like, I'm, like, how can I fight the false allegations? Like, how can I show them that everything that I was saying was right? And everything that everybody else is saying was wrong. Well, I'm not sure that that's going to be important at this point in time. You know, yeah. every stage of the case has different laws, different tests, different procedures, different evidentiary rules. Now, I'm licensed in California, but I'm going to guess it's the same in Arizona. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to uh, contact a lawyer, hopefully on mm -hmm. Monday right and see if you can get yeah. someone to help you or if yeah. you, or if you have a court appointed attorney you need to talk to them immediately send them an email tonight or a text say look can we talk oh. tomorrow or can we talk on monday because if they're going to terminate your rights in three days you, there's a lot you can do but you got to do it like last week um, yeah, I I've been trying to get a hold of CPS, and they said no, because no, no, I'm not no, their no, person. No, 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 not CPS. I just said no. Yeah, lawyer. get a hold of my lawyer. Yeah, okay. I don't know who my lawyer is. That I guess it's a new lawyer. I was in prison. I I I had to do time for the child endangerment. So when I got out, I didn't know who my lawyer was or anything. So when I've been calling them, they won't give me any information because I'm in in Phoenix and not in Kingman. So I even called the courts and asked the courts for the case number and everything, but they don't want to give any information through the phone. So I'm kind of like, you know, sick. I'm, you know, I just been out okay. three months. I'm trying to get everything done. Okay, Diana, have... stop, stop. Get an attorney, yeah. find an attorney online in the yellow okay. pages, someone that practices in this area, in mm -hmm. that county, um, mm -hmm. you know, that practices CPS and juvenile dependency law, because there may be a lot you can do. It's just that you're literally running out of time. And if, yeah. you're, if they're going to terminate your rights in three days, there's a lot you have to do, a lot. Hey, Diana, yeah. I, want, I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Uh, call us in a thank few weeks guys. and give us an update, okay? Let us know what happened. Okay. But it's imperative okay. that you get, get an attorney. There's a, on the postings on one of the Facebook pages as well, there's a young lady from Arizona, and she also says, you got to get an attorney, okay? Okay. That's gonna, okay. At this late stage, if I can just if if I can just say too, you know, I mean, it, you may be able to qualify for victims of crime, which is a uh, um, a so uh, basically it provides um, financial support for things like therapy and um, and legal um, legal expenses. So you might see take a look into that too if that's something okay. that's a difficulty for you right now. Because, yeah, I've been calling lawyers. I've had already 30 lawyers that I've messaged, called, and I have not got any luck. But I'm, I, I'm not going to stop trying, you know? 
right. You know what you might want to do is you might want to call your local county bar association or state bar association and try to get some referrals from them. Usually bar associations have what they call a department that's called something like their lawyer referral service. And they will dial okay. you into one, two or three attorneys where you can go get a low cost or free consultation and find out what you have to do. But you're running out of time, Diana. You got to start it, yeah. you know, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday morning, first thing, you're on the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, Diana? I will. Thank you for calling. You. Don't, don't forget to call us back and give us an update. Appreciate it. I will you. for sure. Thank you, guys. God bless you guys. All righty. Um, you. you know, I, I was uh, listening to Diana's story, Amanda, and did it sound familiar to you? It definitely did. It, it sounded very familiar, um, but more so the part where um, I never got to spend any time in jail, um, thankfully. Um, but where she was talking about like everybody turning against her in the court system and nobody really believing her and her ex, you know, just kind of getting everybody to believe these false allegations. I experienced that and I still am. You know, yeah, it's a real it's a real common issue that a lot of women in particular experience because people who are like, say, narcissistic personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder are experts at emotional manipulation. And when they are able to kind of walk into the courtroom, look calm and composed, you know, while their victim is has been traumatized and is being emotionally triggered just by being in the same room with them, it's difficult for, you know, a lot of women to be able to, um, to mount a, you know, a good case against them because they are so experts at manipulating the system. Right. And it's, it's very unfortunate. It's incredibly unfortunate and it's a very difficult situation, you know? Um, and for me, it just, it's taken a lot of time um, for the people on this case to really see my character, um, you know, and to see by my actions that a lot of these things that I was accused of are simply not true. Mm -hmm. So, but everybody's case is different. Yeah. What kind of, you know, assuming everything that Diana was telling us is accurate, and I believe it to be, the, the situation she's in is, you know, a very difficult uphill battle, almost impossible. You know, there are a lot of people that would say, well, she put herself into this situation. I don't really think that that's the analysis at this point. She's in this situation. I don't think society has benefited um, by her losing her parental rights, you know, uh, to seven children, um, given the fact that she has, seems like she has a lot of evidence and she just needs an attorney to present it. And she can't find one. She doesn't know who her court-appointed attorney is. You know, I just thought of something, Diana. If you, when, when you go to court uh, in three days, one of the things I would do is ask the judge for a continuance or ask the attorney to ask grant you a continuance because you, you don't know who your attorney is. How could you prepare for your case? How could you prepare a defense? And if they don't give you um, a continuance, that may be grounds for uh, an appeal. Because if you just got out of jail and you don't know who your attorney is and nobody will tell you who the attorney is, um, you know, you're destined to lose. And that's just not fair. And I don't think our, our system operates like that, no matter where you are, you know, California or in Arizona. Um, I was just thinking of something. I had a client who moved to Arizona. And uh, she, they opened up a new case on her, and she had to find an attorney in Arizona. And she found a law firm um, in Arizona that uh, kind of specialized in, in these CPS cases. And, you know, I talked to her attorney a couple of times, and they did a great job for her. So, Diana, why don't you send me an email, v.davis at vincentwdavis.com, and I'll see if I can call that client and get the name and telephone number of that attorney. Because he was really, he was very good. He knew all the issues. He knew what to do. And maybe you can call him as well. Okay, we got to take another break right now. This is The Secret, how, how to fight child protective services and when we'll be back right after these messages.